everyone and welcome to another episode of the Heartbeat of Sri Lanka. Today we have with us the founding chairman of the ideal group of companies, Mr. Nalin Welcome. How are you this evening? Hello, how are you? So tell me, to start off, I'll ask you a very simple question. Yeah. To what do you owe your success? Um, actually, I come from a transport-oriented family. I have uh, transport in my DNA. That's the motor side. Uh, I studied in the UK and I was attached to a firm of chartered accountants which I managed for very many years. And during that time, I formed a company in the UK called Ideal Plant and Vehicles Limited, uh, which became a springboard actually to uh, export a wide range of luxury automobiles throughout the world. It was very successful. Uh, I started the company in 1986 whilst I was in the UK and it uh, continued till 2003 uh, for a very long period of time. So that's how I actually started the, the business uh, that I am in. Right. So moving back uh, far, far away, uh, back to your school days, what were your dreams and aspirations as a young boy and how, where did it all start? Well, I'm, I'm an old boy of St. Thomas's College and uh, yeah, at college uh, we always uh, learnt the good values and uh, I always wanted to uh, actually do well in my studies uh, and at the same time I, I took part in field and track and field events at, at college, particularly athletics and that I was keen on cricket and rugby as well. Uh, and then from there, after A-levels, I migrated to the UK, you know, where I spent nearly 11 years. Uh, I was barely 19 when I left the shores of Sri Lanka, and I returned when I was 30 years on the insistence of my dad. So, wh wh what was, why, why, why did you have to return to Sri Lanka? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I was very well set in the UK. I managed a firm of chartered accountants, as I said before, uh, and we lived in a, I had a beautiful, I owned a beautiful house, and uh, my daughter Nimisha, my eldest daughter Nimisha was born in 1985, uh, but my dad was always insisting that I return home uh, for two things. One was because he didn't want my daughter Nimisha to be brought up in England, my father being a very, sort of a traditional man from the village uh, and B, he wanted a successor for the company that he started, S.A. Vilgama and Sons, which he founded in 1931 from very humble, next to nothing beginnings. Uh, he thought that I was the real successor because my elder brother Nimal uh, was getting married to uh, Lakmini Vijayavadana uh, and my other brother Kumar was getting into active politics. So he found that the obvious choice uh, on the succession line would be me. So he prevailed upon me to, to return. So, and that was actually during the height of the JVP activity here in Sri Lanka in, in the late 80s, 80, 87 actually. Uh, but I still thought that I must uh, heed my dad's call. And, and I re returned home much to the annoyance of uh, my my employers and friends in the UK who almost took a bet that I'll, I'll return back to England within two years but here you are <laughs> but it was a different story and I'm glad I'm here and thanks that for giving me that advice and you know uh, and, and I think my coming back was uh, uh, a very good uh, uh, start of this uh, I ideal group uh, being started here in uh, Sri Lanka. So you came back uh, and you came back because your father wanted to continue uh, for, because your father wanted you to continue his uh, business. business. Yes. Uh, yes. What yeah. happened to that? Well actually my, my dad uh, died unfortunately after three years of my arrival here uh, less, less, less than three years and I was I was actually giving leadership to my company in the UK. I didn't sever my links with the UK. I was going to UK every 
every two three months I, actually i was leaving out of a suitcase in those days uh, from late 87 until 2002 that that period was a very hectic period for me because i spent uh, some time in sri lanka but i spent a lot of time in the uk uh, developing my business overseas uh, with a base in the uk i was exporting cars worldwide there were years that i used to do a thousand cars worldwide mainly mercedes benz bmws and the and the top end cars so that kept me going i mean that perhaps was my dream uh, that that was the real thing that kept me motivated i also gave leadership to uh, sa velga man sans which you know which is traditionally a, a haulage company uh, and since nimal moved out and kumar went into politics uh, i also wanted to have something of my own to start something from scratch just like what my dad did so i had that passion in me so i was driving my business uh, more because not for any other reason because i i thought i should pursue my dreams you know so that's that is exactly what happened and idea and the the family business is still there at large but as you know the the haulage industry in sri lanka is in the doldrums because the price you know the 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 expenses have gone sky high but the higher rates and the co contract rates have really not kept pace with it so it's been a tough call but we still have that company uh, which was uh, pioneered by my dad uh, but largely i now manage I and do. give leadership to the ideal group which has grown into a big oak so tell me how did ideal motors or other ideal group exactly began yes in 1986 the time i was in england i formed this company called ideal plant and vehicles limited i always liked the name ideal because i used to read about the ideal homes which is a, the, magazine. the magazine and i thought that was a beautiful name and i thought to myself if i if i form a company i'm going to call it ideal so myself and uh, another partner of mine at the time uh, mr gamini vitarana who was our neighbor down manning place vellavat he was actually my uh, brother kuma and he grew up together but then he migrated to england well before i did and he was also in the motor trade so i teamed up with him and we formed ideal plant and vehicles limited because he had acquired uh, gain british citizenship by then and he was he was largely in the uk so he did the operational work and i did the business development so that's that's the real start of the ideal group i would say it was in the uk thereafter i arrived i migrated to sri lanka in the latter part of 87 uh, and then i kept going back to the uk as i told you every every 2 3 weeks i used to get on a flight and uh, i developed my business until the year 2002 and during this time i also started a company in 1996 or 7 1997 called uh, ideal automotive parts private limited which is a spare parts uh, related company because our uh, sa velga man sons is in panchikabat which is the real hub of the spare parts trade so we we have land there from my dads so i started ideal uh, automotive parts in 1997 then up to 2002 or and 3 we i was still continuing with the uh, ideal plant and vehicles whilst working for sa velgamas sa velgamas sans limited and then in the year 2005 i formed uh, ideal automobile private limited which is the sanyong uh, franchisee in sri lanka along with microcars because uh, microcars and ideal automobile together became the franchisees of uh, sanyong of Shilang. sanyong of korea so i started ideal automobile in 2005 uh, 2006 rather and then in 2009 uh, we were uh, we actually got the uh, uh, mahindra dealership or franchise from Mahindra and Mahindra uh, and then in 2011 Mahindra bought uh, into Sanyong bought 70% of Sanyong and 
it was it was actually just by accident that they bought it it was nothing to do with me but it was a win win situation for me because i was already uh, you know representing uh, uh, sanyong and yes yes sanyong in sri lanka so 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 that was really a a, a good thing and which i really uh, liked very much and that gave gave me a lot of impetus um so you told me that um, your father it was your father who insisted you come down to sri lanka mm. how was your family is uh, backing uh-huh. on this yeah actually my wife uh, deepthi she she didn't really mind uh, she was working for harrods at the time uh, in the in the offices uh, and she was very supportive of me really i must say that she gave a lot of support uh, and uh, there were times that i you know after returning to sri lanka i was literally living out of a suitcase so yes. i think you know it would it would have been a very trying time for her as well but i must say largely she has been very supportive of me so uh, you uh, you bought over the mahindra franchise in sri lanka after that we've seen that mahindra has become a household name in the country how do you manage to capture the market in such a short span of time hmm. Yeah, actually, I uh, started with the franchise business. Came first with uh, uh, Sanyong. Then, in 2009, the latter part of 2000 to 2009, uh, we were uh, awarded the uh, franchise of Mahindra. At that time, uh, Mahindra selected us because of our local knowledge of the business, and they actually gauged me, and 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 they were very confident that. the the knowledge that i had possessed in the automobile field would put them right on top because i i i will be giving leadership to to the to that company which is ideal motors so uh, i i had to learn uh, the lower end of the business as well because as you know i was doing the higher end of the business yes. uh, with the premium cars but it didn't take me very long i I learned a lot from uh, Anand Mahindra and his uh, and Dr. Pawan Gorunka and uh, Praveen Shah they were very helpful uh, they were you know I really uh, learned uh, that business uh, model from them and then I used my local knowledge the expertise I had in the local arena to try and uh, drive my business and and it worked and i and i had a very good i i still have a very good core team uh, who are very very committed so that was i think the real success but more importantly i must say that the success was a result of aftermarket i concentrated on the aftermarket rather than the selling of cars vehicles i put together the infrastructure everywhere throughout, throughout sri lanka I ensured that there were places to repair and service these vehicles right around the country. So I think that was the real strength that I had and that was why the the volumes followed. Great story indeed. So tell me a uh, take uh, as someone who is in the automobile industry from your beginnings. What do you think about the automobile industry in sri lanka and where it's headed yeah that's a very good question because uh, we all know that the motor industry is undergoing a dramatic change when i say dramatic the combustion engine which was started by in the old days uh, henry ford he introduced the assembly line that means he commercialized it yes. and he made a lot of money through its commercialization and then that was the industrial revolution then came the great depression and now it's the technological revolution so in this in during this period what happened was people like steve jobs uh, bill gates and the and these are the people who have made big big names in the technological world and i have a lot of regard for uh, elon musk uh, of tesla you see tesla there's a, there was a scientist called nikola tesla nikola tesla was the 
father of free energy he was the first guy who said that energy from the that that the uh, sun can give you free energy and that the earth's crust has a magnetic field from which you can power bring out power so elon musk gave uh, tesla you know he recognized tesla's efforts and then he called his company tesla tesla and you know what tesla has done today yes you know a company which started in 7 years ago has It's managed to surpass bmw on valuations so you know it's a stupendous task either to either to not seen you know we talk of uber but i think tesla is the real winner here because tesla introduced the electric car and it made a huge game changer and now we talk of artificial intelligence about robots artificial intelligence driverless cars so this is the future so as you know narendra modi the prime minister of india has given a firm pledge that by 2030 all the cars in india are going to be electric cars from mr macron president of france he is saying by 2040 he is going to go electric and by 2050 his country france is going to be carbon neutral so everyone is talking about it and major steps are happening towards it so we also have to be cognizant of this fact now we can't escape that so we have to now change our strategies and long term thinking in line with this so this is the message that i have let's not think about the combustion engine because it is going to be faded out let's give the due place to the electric cars renewable energy and become carbon neutral this is what uh, i feel we must do and but actually gladly our president was a member of the paris agreement last november and he is a firm believer in this so i think that's a great step for us so tell me what sort of advice would you have to give to youngsters in this country who are planning on getting into the automobile industry yeah what is important in the automobile industry for youngsters is that they should be sufficiently knowledgeable uh, it doesn't come easy you have to read you have to be you have to, uh, you have to think have along those knowledge. lines and also think out of the box you have to think out of the box if you think i mean sri lanka which is a 80 billion dollar economy uh, think small no that's not what we need we need to open up the world is a small the entire world is is one marketplace now don't think of sri lanka being small open up think out of the box and try and tap into india that's the, our biggest our neighbor is going to really buzz they are buzzing already but it's they are going to buzz further so think along those lines think think big dream big pursue your dreams that's what i have to say thank you because so i am a dreamer <laughs> thank you so much for those wise words it was lovely having you today thank you so much for having me thank, thank you. you so much that's it from today's heartbeat of sri lanka what we have for you is think out of the box think big and dream big We'll see you in another two weeks.